true or false, DR is just remarketing. True. Using the all of the methods that are available to you and hitting people at different parts of their buying cycle and just basically staying in front of them. Yeah, I mean, think about the things that we just uncovered right now, right? I mean, mm-hmm. when it comes to remarketing, it's follow-up, but we talked about birthdays and, and, and not even like a transactional birthday. It could just be a birthday message, an anniversary. Um, it could be a promotion for something, right? A seasonal promotion for something. So it is more transactional. It could be um, a annual financial review. It could be a annual or biannual um, life and estate and will and trust and estate review, right? It could be an insurance review. This is stuff that you should be doing anyways to stay on top, of, stay top of mind. An equity review for mm-hmm. realtors. It could be a, hey, this next week's um, appetizer, buy one BOGO promotion. It mm-hmm. could be all those things, right? Dude, you know what I'm thinking would be super effective just in my company would be like a, a DR campaign. Like I said, if I've had a hundred customers over the years, mm-hmm. you know, I, I had some, you know, I brought some really talented people on board in the last few months, like literally did just send out an email or send out an SMS like, Hey, I brought on these guys. You know, this is Carlo. This is the type of stuff that he makes. This is Nat. This is the type of stuff that he makes. If you have any kind of content that you think would really help your business, let me know because we got some all stars. You know, like just a, a message that easy. You know, and it's not salesy. It's just like, hey, this is awesome. You want some of this? Like that. That would be so easy to send. And yeah, a hundred people aren't going to say yes, but five will. You don't need hundred people to, right? Yeah. And it might just be a reminder that you're still in business because again, time and circumstances change it all. They may mm-hmm. not have been in the the market for that service at the time, but they may be now or down the road or someone that they know, but that you won't know unless you stay in front of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Business cycle, there it fluctuates heavy, right? Absolutely mm-hmm. heavy. In any given month, I'm the richest man you know and the poorest man you know. You know, exactly. <laughs> like that that swing is heavy and it is for a lot of different business owners. Mm-hmm. All right. Well. I got an understanding now of basically like how you define it and um, basically what DR is. Now, if I want to actually put that into play in my own business, like what tools should I be using? What is it that you're using? uh, And how do you set everything up? Yeah. So that's a great question. If you think about, say, go back to your database and what type of contact information do you have um, for, for your database? Right. If you have name, do you have a mailing address? If you do, then there's direct mail. What type of direct mail can you send? Right. All the different types of direct mail oh, you can send. I wouldn't thought that. Yeah. Okay. Right. Um, email address. Then if you have their email address, you can email. You can get even geekier if you wanted to do some type of like say a a digital ad campaign, because you have email addresses. Mm-hmm. You can do look alike audiences in that sense if we wanted to do that. That's more for us, right? In our what's in our wheelhouse, sending text messages or a phone number. If you have a mobile phone number, then you can send a text message. Um, if you have a landline, then you can't send a text message, but you could call, you could maybe consider doing a voicemail drop as well. Right. So those are some things that you can do in terms of like, it depends on say what contact information you have for your customers. And then it opens up to the different um, things that you can do to reach them based off of that. Um, so, so I'm going to put you on the spot here. If you yeah. have name, email, phone number, and you only have one campaign that you can run, you can only mm-hmm. use one medium. How is it that you connect with people to to tell them the new offer? Yeah, great question. I'd say take it back to I look at okay, what's the lowest hanging fruit? What has the highest open rate? Right? Is does text message have a higher open rate than um, email? Yes. Uh, does do you pick up random phone number like phone calls from random phone numbers? Hell no. Do you even check your voicemail? Probably not. Huh? Right. Yeah. So if you think about it from the the sense of lowest hanging fruit, what's going to get open first? SMS all the way. Right. But that doesn't mm-hmm. mean don't send an email, send the email too. Right. Mm-hmm. You could try the voicemail drop if you want. Right. But not all carriers are doing that. We don't have to go down that road right now. But um, I would say TLDR, right. SMS first, just to see if this they're interested or not. And the messaging is what's going to be the most important. Right. If you mm-hmm. have a winning offer, utilize that offer. But the message basically should be very short, concise, identify who you are and what business you're from, because it's just compliance. Right. But then mm-hmm. ask them, hey, this is Tom Tran with TNT Digital Marketing. They have to know about you because you, they opted in. They gave you their phone number, right? Yeah. And then you ask them about the offer. Like, we have this new offer. Would this be of interest to you? Frame it in the sense of where it's very concise, conversational, but then their reply back, it should just literally be a yes or no question. Okay. 
mm-hmm. then make sure that, and again, just compliance wise, right? Just make sure that you have um, you have language in there where they can opt out if they no longer want to communicate with you via SMS. Okay, that's it. Mm-hmm. Right? Identify who you are, state the offer, frame it in a, a question in terms of where is yes or no. Give them a, a chance to opt out, and from there, the people that say yes are the ones that you're going to want to talk to. Right. So uh, essentially having a better offer is not only going to increase your reply rate, it's also going to keep more people on your list. Offer trumps all. Yeah. Doesn't matter what it looks like, right? It could be the best offer. It could be the the, the crappiest offer in the be- like presented in the best way possible. It's not going to resonate, right? Mm-hmm. As opposed to a really crummy offer written, say, uh, with, with a crayon on a scratch pad. If that mm-hmm. offer is better, Right, that offer is the one you go with. Doesn't matter how it's presented. Right, offer trumps all. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Th- yeah. That makes sense to me. So it is important that before you set it up and before you kind of blast something out to a full database of a hundred, five hundred, ten thousand people, you just have it actually dialed in, and then you know what's going to happen next. Mm-hmm. Like if I'm a local gym, for example, and you make an an awesome campaign for me, that that gets people entry interested for sure they want to come back you know they have two three thousand people in that but say 500 people respond like what is that gym supposed to do yeah right so think about it from the capacity of you as business owner as well one what we're doing is we have to understand how big of a list that gym for example has and what their basically capacity is. So for us as the marketer, or even you as the gym owner that's looking to fill up more um, walk-ins, right? And more appointments for people to um, ultimately sell them into some type of a membership. How many Mm -hmm. appointments can you take on? Test the offer with the subset first, and then see how many appointments that you get of people raising their hand. One, it's gonna validate the offer. Two, it's going to, you'll be able to test to see how many, how many messages do I need to send out that then equates to a certain appointment. So don't, don't do yourself a disservice of blasting it to your entire database. One, it's not going to work because of the technical reasons, but then two, it's not going to work because it's going to give you, it's going to give you, it'll create another problem, a logistical nightmare because you won't be able to facilitate all these appointments that you're generating for yourself. It's a good problem Uh, to have, but it's still a problem. Okay. Like, yeah, that's actually interesting. So if I was to send it out to say like 10,000 people on a certain database, basically what you're saying is just figure out like how many people, if they reply, can we actually handle? 100%. So you start with a list of like 500 or or even 250 at first to see. 250, zero replies, okay, the offer has to be better. 250. If it's 250 and we get 100 replies, then maybe this offer is too good. Or and if it is, yeah, the scale it. Hire some more people because it's, you know, it's about to start raining. Right. Huh. Okay. Um, so if if I were to be setting this up in my own business, mm-hmm. um, like you, you know my tech stack. We use GHL. Uh, we got a Twilio integration. Uh, I also use a lot of HubSpot and some other things. Yeah. So what is important to set up? If you're saying that SMS is kind of the way to go, how would you set that up? Yeah. I mean, uh, we both use a very similar tech stack. It's um, a, our systems are built on top of um, Go High Level, right? And the nuance with uh, working with someone like Kevin or myself is that we have a lot of these um, campaigns that are already built in and then tailored to your type of business. So you don't have to build from scratch, right? But uh, effectively, what you're going to need to look for is a way for you to be able to send out marketing SMS, whatever platform that's going to be, right? Mm -hmm. Um, A way for you to be able to communicate with them on whatever channel that you're communicating with them. And then also you need to, if you take appointments or walk-ins, you need to make sure that you have some type of a calendar or an appointment-based system to be able to make sure that you're putting them on your calendar and then you're sending out appointment reminders to them as well. It's important, right? So if you have, Mm. like, say, a Frankenstein approach, you'll need something that does SMS, you'll need something that does appointments, and you'll need some type of integration with your business calendar and a CRM. So then you know that this is happening. Right. Whether you do that with multiple softwares or you work with uh, someone like either your uh, company or my company that does this all in house, it's effectively that's kind of how you want to bake your cake, if you will. Right. Mm -hmm. So there'd there'd be like essentially building out, it's not one automation. It's not like I'm blasting a list. It's Mm -hmm. like I'm developing six or seven, yeah, I don't know, like make up the number. Yeah, so that I can speak to somebody in every instance of exactly what happened here. Right. So can your system, your solution, business owner, right? Send out text messages, send out voicemail drops if you choose to do that. All the things you're choosing to do. Uh, 
call, right? Two-way calling, right? Uh, with that phone number, um, CRM to attract the people that are basically wherever they are in that path. Um, do you have um, an email marketing tool for you to be able to send and receive email from? Um, are you able to have more than one user on that platform, right? And then be able to track all that. And then also if you so choose, like, do you have a direct mail integration if you're sending out direct mail? Because direct mm -hmm. mail still works, right? Are you doing the local weekly circular? Are you doing, say, um, you know, click to mail from uh, USPS if you're based in the United States? Are you doing, um, like, say, EDDM routes, every door direct mail routes, right? Those things you want to take into consideration because when it comes down to it, and you're spending uh, money and time and resources on marketing and advertising, right? You want to know what's working, what's not. You have to be able to track it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's like, it's not only like the the offensive part of it, you know, which is how I kind of think about emails, texts, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But it's also like actually having a way to know, did these people show up? You know, like we can send out these reminders, but if nobody buys anything, okay, it doesn't work. Even if a hundred people reply, if nobody buys, it didn't work, right? So it is a good way to actually, you know, spike results to to work through a system and see which part of it isn't working. But you you definitely need everything tied together with tracking ahead of time to actually know what's a winner and and actually to set goals ahead of time to know did we meet them? Did we not? Do we reinvest here? Do we go deeper? I'll I'll, I'll throw one other one um, out there too for the businesses that have foot traffic in your brick and mortar. Um, if you are providing some sort of free Wi-Fi, um, a lot of these newer routers, uh, and this could be even dated by the time we're talking about this, right? But that strategy is you could effectively have them uh, opt in to then receive the Wi-Fi password, okay? Mm -hmm. And why would you want to do that? Again, building your database, right? Mm -hmm. If they want free Wi-Fi from your local establishment and you're offering that as a service there, right? Just uh, as a person. So like if you're a restaurant, you're basically saying this person has already been in my restaurant. They're already there. You fit, they're physically there. They're a good there. person to come back. Coffee shop, restaurant, anything mm -hmm. that's a brick and mortar that has travel, like foot traffic that they're spending time and you're offering Wi-Fi, right? Mm. Yeah. Cause a lot of times I would figure like say airports do that. And I always airports think do. it's, it's silly for an airport because, you know, I go from Tokyo to Atlanta Mm -hmm. back to toronto right you know so like i'm not planning on being in atlanta again but they have my information but if I, I challenge you with this though right if you had that information as the airport and you mm -hmm. were a frequent traveler and you only wanted to offer uh a special type of an offer or a message to but you kevin back when you're in that atlanta mm -hmm. airport again they without that data they wouldn't be able to do that oh yeah i didn't think of that like the the thing I love about marketing is like, essentially it's just limited by your creativity, right? You know, it's just like your understanding of why somebody would be here and basically what would appeal to them in that exact time. You know, like in my head, I'm like, I'm never going to be in Atlanta again. However, if they see that I'm there 10 times, well, now I'm a, this person, you know, and like now I'm a frequent flyer that gets this and they give me a different offer and like, Hey, maybe I should know about their points reward cards. And maybe I should know about, season pass at the food court or yeah you know, whatever the heck it is right right absolutely mm -hmm. you might not be frequent but then what about everyone else that goes through that that airport frequently yeah that's that's interesting to me because it's just an extra an extra layer you know it's an extra layer of knowledge and an extra uh, honestly i can't even compute it right now to tell you the oh truth. yeah i mean unpack it right it's like just and you think about say proximity targeting when you're about to go on stage and give a training you know yeah. that on facebook you can do that radius type of marketing so yeah. if you had a message out there saying hey this is kevin from ad ronin just, I'm excited to be presenting with you guys in the next couple of hours or the next day. Be on the lookout yeah. for me. Mention this when you see me on stage or after stage, and I got a special bonus for you. Are you kidding me? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Hey, you're we know you're. Crazy. Yeah, we know you're in the area, right? Uh, if if you've never visited us before, come for a free appetizer or come in for a free whatever that is. Because we also know, right, in the restaurant uh, business, oftentimes where are the money makers? The money makers yeah. are the add-ons, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, that that's awesome. Like literally, I won't even have an understanding of that for about six months. I don't think. Mm -hmm. But what I'm taking away from there is definitely, it's like a text first, but at the same time, it's like you need everything built in, right? So you, as much as like, if you were gonna just choose one, you would go with SMS. Yep. You should still have Messenger. You should still have email. You should still have every other kind of bell and whistle to just keep connecting with people who've already said they're interested 
I challenge the people that have reward programs, right? Does your vendor for your reward program uh, give you your list or mm -hmm. is it theirs? If you don't have it, you can't use it. If you're paying for it, I would highly recommend you ask it for it, right? Still use so, them for what they're doing. I'm not saying mm -hmm. don't do that, right? But then why, why was Groupon so popular at the time? They had the customers, they had the local foot traffic. So if you wanted that, and what is that? It's a glorified way of saying do you have, they have the database, right? They have the list. They have wow. the list. So build the list, build your own group on. That's the stuff that we can set up for you, for your system working on behalf, systematize, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, in terms of actionability, step one, build a list. Build a list. Right? Step two, you know, most people already have a list. Maybe they don't actually even know what to do with it. But like, if you've been in business for a few years, you already have a list. Mm -hmm. And then two, just set up a system that lets you kind of keep making contact with them, whether it be because of seasonality, where they are located just a certain time of their buying cycle you know that, that gives a lot of actual options and i bet you you would see your conversion rates actually go through the roof over time you know i mean at, at the very foundation of it why do we do marketing and advertising right it's to drive new business but then is it new business with new customers or new business with existing customers if the answer is the latter meaning existing customers then you are spending you're overspending to get them back to, through your door or back to buy your good or service aren't you Mm -hmm. think about that right mm -hmm. yeah if you're paying marketing dollars to find people who've already purchased with you that that's basically a waste uh and it's a lot to driving the value like you were saying right like if it's cheaper if to do a reach campaign for us we know that strategically it's cheaper for us to do a reach campaign with uh, an existing a custom audience it's your own database right mm -hmm. to send a message out there and then also do the other things we talked about than it is to do say a lead generation campaign or a conversion campaign to the same people that are already bought from you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So just kind of the last thing I'm going to ask before I kind of put this into practice myself. Now you're using GHL because essentially it ties in Twilio, uh, all the different social channels. You might put it out your email. Basically anybody is in there goes into that, that context and conversations field so that you can kind of stay on top of everything. Mm -hmm. um can you kind of speak on that on the importance of just being able to actually like what i like of that is it does a 360 if you don't have ghl like what are some alternatives for ghl there you go your tech stack right think about your tech stack it's and for the people that haven't heard that term before it's just what are you using to make sure that you can actually uh implement these strategies that we're talking about Right? How can you do SMS and phone calls and voicemail drops? How can you do email marketing? Do you have something that is a, a CRM as well? Um, do you have a system like that? And oftentimes, if you do have a system like that, it's more than likely comprised of multiple softwares or Zapier or something else on the back end that basically can connect all those things. So one of the benefits of uh, building our systems on top of um, something like a, a software company like Goal High Level is um, all it takes all of that entire tech stack consolidates into one place for you and I to be able to actually design the systems on top of that software to get our our customers um, the results that they want, right? So the, and the nuance of working with someone like uh, Kevin or myself is combined. We have over two decades of experience in doing this. We probably um, have either built out or can build out something that is going to be directly impactful for your business, as opposed to you going out directly, um, looking at a, a, a tool set or software like high level, and then trying to learn um, how to incorporate and build these campaigns out yourself. Right. Yeah, so, and, and what's a real game changer? Sorry to interrupt you there. No, you're it's good. the fact that like, if you get it once, you can just duplicate it. Right. Mm -hmm. Like for me, that's the chat, like the, the game changing aspect of GHL, even more so than when I used to use click funnels or different systems. Mm -hmm. It was just the fact that I can duplicate a snapshot and then I'll get all of my automations. I'll get my right. landing pages, my websites, all of that stuff. You know, like once you're niching down, whether you're in, you know, pick your industry doesn't really matter. Everybody is still just trying to connect with new customers. Right. And generally, if you're in a service based industry, you're saying very similar things to try to get people to actually contact you. It's the time saving that like where I see the real benefit and, and money, the stuff that we're talking about, in addition to what you're saying with the systems, like how else would you be able to do this, right? Leveraging, say automation before automation, automation was hiring someone else to do it. Are you doing mm -hmm. the in-house and paying, say, um, our glorified minimum wage here just to get someone through the door? Are they, are they competent enough to do that? Are they going to stay on top? There's still human error. Mm -hmm. Or are you hiring someone overseas to try to facilitate this for you and represent your brand or your company? 
right? There's there, think about like the 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 value that we bring. You're saving time, you're saving money, um, and resources. So then you can allocate them towards the same things. So ultimately, what we're doing is we're providing a, a system as a solution to be able to um, really increase your profitability. I always look at at and not to just make this a sermon on GHL, but I look at it. It's like basically like I'm buying an employee. Right, oh, I'm getting an employee that, that works 24 hours a day. There you go. Does it always exactly exactly how I said it? You know, it is garbage in, garbage out. So if you don't have your there system you set up correctly, it's not going to work correctly. But once it is dialed in, like that's the way that I I write it off in my business. I just look at it and say, you know, when it's all said and done, we probably do about a thousand dollars worth of subscriptions a month, um, with GHL and other things kind of comprising the majority of it. But when you compare it to like other kind of industries, other businesses, like, you know, I didn't have to buy a dump truck or a crane or a, anything else that costs like a half a million dollars or more, right? Like you don't have to worry about workers comp and get someone getting sick, asking for a raise, calling in, uh, not showing up, retraining. You don't have to worry about any of that stuff, right? Mm -hmm. You do have to worry about sending emails to 10,000 people that are, you know, written wrong or filled with spelling mistakes or you messed up their email list. Cause I definitely did that back in the day, you know, like that, that's mm -hmm. kind of like the, the learning curves and truthfully yeah. that's why you work with somebody who's done it before. Right. Cause they, they've seen it, they made those mistakes and they're not going to blast your list. You're aggregating that, that year, those years of experience, right? Yeah, essentially. Well, before we uh, kind of finish this one up, Tom, is there anything else that we're kind of just leaving out of the DR conversation? Do it. If you're a business that has a database and you're not actively putting an offer in front of them to get in front of them to talk to them about what you're doing right now or just to do kind of like a warm uh, heat check on your clients. So it's the client retention or new business. If you're not doing that right now, why aren't you? Please let us know. Ask us any questions that you have, however we can help to you to implement this in your business. If you have a database and you're not doing this, why aren't you? Let us help you get that done. And if you don't have a list yet, what's holding you back let's talk about it so we can give you some ideas in terms of some list building ideas or systems to put in place so then you can start to actually activate this like and also if you've had one customer you have a list mm -hmm. you know like i know i was i fell victim to it of thinking like well i don't have enough people it's not worth my time but if i've literally had 10 people that purchased this off of me before and i write 10 people an email about hey i got this new thing Worst thing that happens is 10 people that I already know don't reply, right? Best case scenario or more likely scenario is one or two of them are going to be like, yeah, that seems cool. And you just strike it up. So just because your list doesn't have 10,000 people doesn't mean you don't have a list, right? It just means you have a smaller list or yep. it's also a list of, you know, big ticket spenders, essentially mm -hmm. as an agency, that's what you have. So get going on that list.